earlier, and that is what it is, but I'm glad you can make it. We're going to start from here. What I want to do is, just to give you a little added value today, uh, we're going to do passing uh, parameter values into sub report. That's all I was going to do, but since I had a mix up, I throw a little added value in here. I was going to just formatting the sub report to show you some of the things that you can run into as you put a sub report into the regular report. So today we're going to look at passing parameter values into the sub report. And let me go ahead and hit my screen here. So we're going to um, we're going to add existing report into another report or a sub report actually. Connect the parameter to the main report to the sub report. And here's the uh, I always say 20 minute 30 or 20 minute. How about a 20 30 second commercial that uh, we do. We customize scripts reports. We do trade reports, and it just to me over the years, it's just a matter of uh, the learning curve really is uh, shortened when you're using your data building your reports. So there's a uh, do it list me step. So next screen, if you uh, need contact us for Tom Zidell, here's our email addresses and phone numbers, and you'll find the uh, webinar archive site. So if you want to look at the the past webinars. So let me go ahead and exit out of that, and let's go Crystal Reports. And what I'm going to do is we have a report here that we're going to call Earnings and Deduction Summary Report. Now, the report's going to be Earnings Codes. Actually, I've got the wrong one open. Here's our Earnings and Deduction Oh, we have the pay codes. And the pay codes usually comes out of um, PO, PO time, time record out of loss, and for the users loss, and those you don't just kind of hang in with us. We're grabbing pay codes out of one table. Now your deductor are going to come out of another table. And the thing is, when you go to join the tables, and you try to do all in one query. The query may take a long time, so wind up it's better to break up between earnings and deductions. So what we're doing is well, here's our earnings. I just brought in a few, and here's our sub report called the deductions. So if you look at this, the deductions or different codes. So it's grouped differently. One's grouped by pay codes, one's grouped by deduction. Another thing is you'll notice when we bring these two together, the columns don't head up or don't line up. So the thing is is that we're going to have something to um, line that comes up. So let's do the first thing is we're going to go with report and we're going to add the sub report into this. So I'm going to go up here to uh, design and you need to have a place to put the sub-report. I meant to delete this because it was before. You need to have a place to put your sub-report. So I'm in the main report. I'm going to go down to the report foot over here to the left-hand side. I'm going to right-click. I want to add or insert section below. And this is where we're going to put our sub-report. And the reason I want it there, I don't want it in the same section that my grand total is in in the report footer because I need to be able to separate the two. I don't want them in the same section. So I've broken it up between report footer A and report footer B. So I'm going to go up to insert on the menu bar. I'm going to set the support. And then we could have created a sub um, on the fly use report wizard. I've already got one. The thing about this report, it already has its headers and stuff inside that. And let me go find it here. I'm at this, and I've been writing it. And I'm thinking, where is that thing? So I'm a, I'm gonna pick the sub report, and I'm gonna put it in there. And I'm gonna put as far left hand side of the report footer as I can, and drag it all the way across. And one of the attributes of the sub report is that it automatically has borders around it. And it's kind of hard to talk and drag this mouse at the same time. It's kind of like walking and talking at the same time. Kind of hard to do for me. Here we go. All right, well, here's our sub report. I got a preview of this thing. And it's got a parameter in the sub report. Up here, you have your period end date for the main report. And we're going to grab a period end date here. And then we have a sub in, in the sub report. There's actually another parameter that's used just sub report, if you notice up here. And then we have a here for deduction sub. That's not the one I wanted. Let me hit OK here. I'll grab the one. I'm, I'm grabbing specific ones on some that doesn't have the real data or real data in it. This will take a long time to run. And let me cancel that real quickly. 
cancel that real quickly. Okay, now let me go back over here again and go back to the design tab. I'm going to get rid of that. That's not the one I wanted. Okay, now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to insert a sub report. One that's already created. I want the sub report that is made for the web. And I was just here a minute ago. There it is. That's what I was looking for. It's a deduction sub webinar. That's what I want because of just this webinar. I click OK. And we we'll drop it inside the report footer. And when I go to preview this, it's going to ask me for a, a per end reports have a uh, per end date. Now if you look up here, this first per end of the main report, the second one is for the sub report. But it's going to ask at one time, but when you go to LBI and some other applications, it passes per end date twice. One for each the report, the main report. I'm going to select it just one time here. And then it's uh, inner grouping level. This is for the actually this we're going to leave it alone. I'm going to click OK. And let me go ahead and log into this. So as it reads the records, we need to do a couple things. One is we're going to link the, the uh, parameters together. Okay, up here at the top, now usually you'd have your earnings, you have pages and pages of earnings, and then your your down here below is our sub-report. The reason I know it's a sub-report is a couple things. One is you notice it has the border around it. Let's get rid of that border. So if I click on the sub-report and format sub-report, I have the border from here. So none, none. Top and bottom, we'll make sure there's no borders around it. Notice how it's getting cut off here. Mainly it's getting cut off is because I need to widen the uh, sub-report more. I the designs have to do that. It's just easier to push it to the far left as we can, as high as we can, and widen it more. All right, so what I want to do is I want to join the parameters on these. So first of all, I click on the sub-report, go down to change sub-report links. Now what happens is I'm going to go and find the parameter on the report. Fields. This is in the main report as I scroll down. And my parameter is going to be down towards the bottom. There it is. And I push it over. And the sub report is going to find you know, what parameter field you want to use. So it's found a field called per end date you want to use on that. And, and nine times out of ten, that's going to work just fine. In fact, if I did a sub report using the wizard, I would, wouldn't build parameters out of the sub report. I would just take the parameter of the per end date of the main report and put it to the per end date of the sub report, the field. Or point to any other date field that's in our list here. But notice over here on the left hand side, it automatically gave me this, uh, this uh, selection. If I do a drop down, if you notice there's a parameter fields selection and down there there's the print date. So if I click that, what's going to happen is going to pull the main parameter of the main the parameter of the main report to the parameter called per end date of the sub report. And you can do that on multiple parameters or like we had here before we also have grouping parameters in the support leave alone. So now this is going to be um, this is going to be um, connected. So when I go and refresh this, it's going to just ask me the one time. So notice up here just says per end date and not both of them. And I'm going to pick um, our parameter and down below, this is actually to the sub report, so I can actually have a parameter to the sub report doing something else. I'm okay here, but here we're going to add a value. Notice how, well, I don't have a lot, I don't have a lot of uh, records there, but if my sub report, if it were to happen to go over to three piece, excuse me. Me. I'm looking at it back. Let's say that 
this is running, it has 20 pages, and on page 19 you have the earnings report in this, and all of a sudden you go down and here's the, our deduction report. Well, I want this to come, I don't want the header to show up, I actually want this header to be at the top of the page. So what's happened is I have to go to the sub-report and get rid of it here. So I'm going to go to report footer, report footer A, I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to go to the section expert, and then I want this, um, actually what I want to do is a new page after first. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to the array, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to section expert, I'm going to page and a new page after. So now I want to click on this. The first page is going to be our pay code, the next page is going to be our deduction code. And look what happened, here's the problem. That we have two headers up here. One header here is from the main report, the second header down here is from the subboard. So I'm going to go up here to the page header A, I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to the section expert, and where it says suppress here, I'm going to go to the conditional matter, click on that, and I want this suppressed based on the last record. Now there's a function called on the record. Where is it found in here? I'm not sure, but what I am sure of is if you go down here to the editor and you hold down the control key and hit the space bar and type on, there's last record. So on last record, this section is going to suppress so I go here, I click OK. So on the last page, it's showing here's my sub-report. Here's the other problem, is that if the sub-report happens to go over more than one page, you're going to lose all your headings and headers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sub -report. Here's the sub-report. I'm going to click on report header A. I'm going to suppress that. I don't want to see it at all. I'm going to my report header, right click on that, and I'm going to select all. I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to press report header B. I'm going to go back to our main report. See, here's the main report now, and then here's the sub report. I'm going to go to report I'm going to right click on that, insert section below. I'm going to paste the headers that we just had. And notice how the headers don't, they don't match because if I go to preview here on the page, here's the headers for the first page, I've got both of them. So what I'm going to do is the report header B, I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to go to the section expert here, I'm going to say um, test, if not, not on last page or last record, excuse me. I say page is record. So page one is not last record. We have the header, page page header A is our pay code with the pay code information. And then down here at the very bottom, let's say page 19, whatever, here's the last record. So if I go to the next page, page header A is not going because I'm on the last record, it's suppressed. And so page header B, which is our deduction code, showing. So now when our deduction code, see, here's the, here's the sub-report. You can see the box run out. When the sub-report goes over multiple pages, you're going to have another header for the uh, sub-report. So let me go to design tab. We have one report header, which is our earnings deduction summary. Our page header B is going to be our pay codes. Our page header A is our pay codes. Our page header B is our deduction codes. Page header A, I'm going to right click on that, section expert, it's going to be suppressed if it's on the last record. If I go to page header B, I go to suppress, it's going to suppress if it's not on the last record. Um, then down our sub-report is down in report header B, and the reason I could make it last record and show is because they're both the grand total and the reports in the report footer, but I broke it up into sections, the report footer A and footer B. And then to join it, join the sub-report to the main report versus the parameters, all I did was right click on our sub-report and change the report links. And from here, I found the uh, parameter that is in the main report. Per end day, I pushed it over here to the fields to be linked. And then I uh, went to uh, sub-parameter fields to use and did a drop down here, it automatically created the per date. It was going to connect it to the per end date field inside the main report. 
But what I did is I went, or the sub report, what I did is I went down the parameters. These are the parameters to the sub report. I picked the brand date here so that the parameter, parameter date of the sub report would be connected to the parameter or the parameter date on the main report. And I combined those two at that point. When I go to run this report and I refresh it, it's only going to ask the parameter once. So that's our sub report. That's the value from your main report to your sub report. I'm going to stay online here for a few minutes. If you have any questions, I'm glad to do that. Um, again, uh, if, if you have any reports you'd like for me to do a demonstration on or a problem that you have with a demonstration, I'll do that and just send those on, and we'll see you guys next week. So have a, have a good Friday, and you guys take care.